Was Super Bowl 2022's halftime show a satanic ritual? Here we see Dr. Dre flashing the devil horns at Super Bowl 2022 before millions of impressionable children as he raps the devil's music and seeks to widen their appeal and introduce potentially millions more to their evil and perverse lyrics. According to Jason Whitlock, popular TV host and journalist who worked for ESPN and several other outlets, the answer is yes. Whitlock, who claims to be an insider and to own every song by Dr. Dre and to have written for Playboy magazine, says that Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Eminem were basically peddling verbal pornography at the Super Bowl halftime show as part of a satanic agenda and that their music is basically a soundtrack for a movie about Babylon. So if Jason Whitlock had himself been drawn into their satanic web, why is he warning others? I do, however, have a problem with Dre and Snoop performing at halftime of the Super Bowl. Pornography and pornographers are unworthy of America's biggest stage. Free at last, free at last. Thanks Sodom and Gomorrah, the NFL will let lyrical pornography blast. The Super Bowl halftime will be a satanic ritual, a celebration of America's moral decay. It's a musical collection of old Playboy and Hustler magazines. It's hedonism, materialism, immorality and violence in rhyme form set to music. It's the soundtrack for a movie about Babylon. Truth be told, there's a sinister diabolical element wherein dark biblical forces prophesied by the Lord in the Bible are at work using very popular rap artists as meat puppets to influence hundreds of millions of people. It is vital that we understand that the human race is really one race and that the human race is being destroyed by demonic principalities and powers that are using many of these artists as mere puppets to do their bidding. Eminem, Dr. Dre, and Snoop Dogg have wickedly perverse and misogynistic lyrics that glorify either the abuse, rape, and even murder of women or all of the above. In Dr. Dre's song, One Less B-I-T-C-H, which was referenced by Jason Whitlock, he raps about killing different women after he has sex with them, and he raps about the first one being gang raped by his buddies first before he murders her with a 44. I was thinking the worst, but yo, I had to let my the first, yeah. Loaded up the 44, yo. And then it's great smoke the whole. One less, one less you gotta worry about. Motherfucking right. In our popular expose, They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll, we document how many of the rock stars, pop artists, and rap artists for decades now have admitted to being used by dark satanic forces. Record producer and promoter Richard Griffey, who helped launch Death Row Records, which was co-founded by Dr. Dre, allegedly told Dre biographers John Borgmeier and Holly Lang, quote, I was there when Dre said he sold his soul to the devil for a million bucks, and I swear the devil got a receipt on his expletive. Dr. Dre, one of the most successful rappers of all time, put out his own beat headphones, wherein the letter B was curiously made to look like the number six, and various commercials for the headphones, one featuring him, highlighted what appeared to be three sixes together, forming 666, the number of the name of the coming Antichrist that Jesus warned about in the book of Revelation. In Snoop Dogg's song, Murder Was the Case, which was released on the heels of Snoop's indictment on murder charges, Snoop Dogg raps about his symbolic murder and resurrection, wherein he has given his life back by the devil after selling his soul to Satan. The beat, not surprisingly, was laid down by Dr. Dre, who also appropriately directed the video for the song. Snoop Dogg, after being shot, raps, I see demons. Satan enters a room in the form of a crow and transforms himself into this creepy white guy with black fingernails. Satan then offers Snoop the world as he gives him visions of riches and women and booze and drugs. Bring your lifestyle to me, I make it better. And how long will I live? Eternal life better forever. I make your life better than you can imagine or even dream of. So Snoop surrenders his soul to Satan as Satan enters his body in the form of smoke. Snoop's possession and selling his soul to do the devil's bidding is complete as we see him up and healthy and praying to Satan next to an inverted or upside down cross, which are routinely used by Satanists as we see here, here, and here. 50 Cent, whose lyrics are so filthy that he had to give a censored version to his son, but not to our children, was also featured at Super Bowl 2022. This is not shocking because in his song, I'm Supposed to Die Tonight, he raps about not being sure if he's God's child or Satan's angel. 
Sometimes I sit and look at life from a different angle. Don't know if I'm God's child or I'm Satan's angel. Well, it's pretty clear 50 Cent isn't turning people to Jesus, but glorifying all sorts of evil. DJ and record producer Irv Gotti, who has collaborated with everyone from Jay-Z and DMX to Kanye West, has no doubt about who 50 Cent is serving. Everything you think of 50 is just negative. He's, he's just an engine of negativity, beef, chaos. Sounds like he's with Satan to me, man. I think, you know, Satan was like, I'm going to use you. You're, a, you're, you're going to be great for me. Eminem has also given himself over to satanic forces. In Eminem's song, 3 AM, surprise, surprise, Eminem raps over a Dr. Dre beat. Eminem glorifies being a serial killer and depicts himself as demon-possessed. Eminem describes himself as one who sleepwalks and unconsciously strips himself naked as he goes about on murderous binges when he kills multiple people. The scenery reveals blood everywhere as his eyes go blank as the demonic powers control him. Eminem has admitted repeatedly that he has been a sellout to Satan for power. Eminem has further admitted that his music corrupts young people. A bunch of little kids wanna swear just like me. I think I was put here to annoy the world and destroy your little four-year-old boy your girl. In his biographical song, Say Goodbye Hollywood, Eminem raps about leaving his girlfriend and making it big as a rapper after selling his soul to the devil. If I can go back, I never would have rapped. I sold my soul to the devil, I'll never get it back. In Eminem's song, Demon Inside, he relates experiences that describe classic demon possession. I'm possessed by evil demons that torture me while I'm sleeping. I keep dreaming of death that I'm hearing people screaming. The devil spirit is trapped inside me and I want it out. It got silent, then all these voices say, Go, follow me to the gates of hell. She gave me the keys to the best weed and a bag of sex. And told me that's just the start. Satan will be in to see me later. To see if I'm interested in being partners. In his song, Losing Yourself, Eminem sings, This world is mine for the taking. Make me king as we move toward a new world order. But I kept rhyming and step right in the next cipher. Best believe somebody's paying the pot piper. In the notorious B.I.G. song, Dead Wrong, Eminem is featured rapping lyrics that sing about various forms of devil worship. He literally raps, quote, There's several different levels to devil worshiping. Then he goes on to demonically declare, Human sacrifices, cannibalism, candles and exorcism, animals having sex with them, camels, mammals and rabbits. Eminem has made it crystal clear in his song, Till Hell Freezes Over, that he refuses to repent of his rebellion against God and will keep serving Satan and engaging in demonic occult practices until the day he dies. I'm into voodoo, tarot cards and Ouija boards, lighting candles, camping out at haunted beach resorts. I write the dark and rap about perverted violence. I used to sell pizzas, now I got 12 pieces to tell Jesus. I'm a quick sending when hell freezes. That's why my brain is out of order. In Eminem's song, My Darling, Eminem depicts Satan as serenading him to continue in his original deal with the devil. In the dark shall emerge from the fiery depths of hell. In the shadows of all who are willing to sell their souls for this rap game. So at night before I sleep, I look in the mirror. The mirror grows lips and it whispers, come nearer. F this mirror. I'm not in the mirror, I'm inside you. Let me guide you. F you die, you son of a. Soldier, soul to me, need I remind you? You remember that night you prayed to God you give anything to get a record deal? Well, Dre signed you. Look at this house, look at these cars, they're so nice. Woo! Oh, but you didn't know fame has a price too. Who's your best friend from high school? Your wife too? Ain't even sure if your kids like you. But together we can break the cycle. Marshall, Why? no one's gonna love you like I do. It is significant that in this same song, Satan appeals to Dr. Dre who served Satan with Eminem at the last Super Bowl, and who signed Eminem to a record deal to encourage him to keep his deal in serving the devil. In his song Rain Man, Eminem expresses how his demonic possession gave him ingenious powers like Rain Man. Notice that Eminem is in a way comparing himself to the savant in the movie Rain Man starring Dustin Hoffman. Only Eminem attributes his special powers to possession by devils. My soul is possessed by this devil, my new name is Rain Man. Kendrick Lamar, who also performed at the Super Bowl, may seem tame compared to Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Eminem, but he too has music that's full of perverse and disgusting language. Also, you don't have to be a Satanist to promote a false religious system. Kendrick Lamar is potentially leading multitudes of people into false doctrine by highlighting the doctrines of the Black Hebrew Israelite movement. He admitted to Rolling Stone magazine that he shared this perspective through his music on his last album. 
The man behind Kendrick Lamar's recent references to Hebrew Israelite doctrine is his cousin, Carl Duckworth, who is himself a member of the Black Hebrew Israelite movement, with his sect being headquartered in New York. Duckworth goes by the name Carney Ben Israel. Here we see Lamar with a Bible in his right hand as he's wearing a t-shirt designed by black Israelites with a scriptural reference. Lamar's cousin, Israel, wrote below the photo on his Facebook page, quote, We study all that day and I gave him my Bible that day in his hand. All praise is to the Most High. The word is getting out there. Kendrick Lamar's song, Yah, promotes the sect with Lamar rapping. I'm an Israelite, don't call me black no more. That word is only a color, it ain't facts no more. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the black Hebrew Israelite sect in Baltimore is classified as a hate group for their hatred towards white people. Many black Hebrew Israelite sects actually teach that white people are evil. It's like a black version of the Ku Klux Klan. According to Jacob S. Dorman, rather than identifying with true Judaism, most black Hebrew Israelite groups, beliefs, and practices are an amalgamation of all sorts of beliefs, including occult teachings from, quote, Freemasonry, mind power, theosophy, Judaism, the occult, and African-American Christianity's deep association with the Hebrews of the Old Testament. Theosophy was founded by Madame Blavatsky, an occultist who claimed that Satan is the real redeemer and that Yahweh is evil. In Lamar's last album, he also raps about a verse from the biblical book of Deuteronomy, applying it specifically to black folks as though they are under a curse, declaring, and Deuteronomy say that we all been cursed. Sadly, Kanye West, who had been claiming to be a Christian, is now promoting the black Hebrew Israelite movement. Kanye claims to be an Israeli descendant whose people were enslaved in Egypt for 400 years and uses the same verse that Lamar does to claim that it applies not to the Jews, but to black Hebrew Israelites who are now under a curse. And by the way, we blood of Christ. We right. blood of Moses. Right. We're not just a color in a crayon box. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. don't want it, but we are kings. Mm -hmm. But the 400 years doesn't have to deal with slavery. It has to deal with the Bible. It has to deal with us being disobedient to God. Right. And that's why we farm land that is in our own. The truth is that all human beings, that's each and every one of us, who have not been saved by God's grace are under the curse of the law. Because as Galatians chapter 3 states, we have all broken God's moral law of love and the wages of sin is death. God's word reveals that the human problem is not a skin problem of being red, brown, yellow, black, or white, but that it's a sin problem. God's word states in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. That's why if we're honest, we'll admit that our consciences tell us that we are guilty and that we have hurt other people and that we need to get right with God. It's not about being a certain race. It's about our need for God's grace. God's word teaches us in the same chapter in the book of Galatians chapter 3 that Jesus Christ was cursed for us. He bore our sins. Jesus himself said in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He went on to say he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Or there are thousands of people who have sold their souls and most of them die before Satan gives them anything. Because as Jesus said in John 8, 44, that Satan is the father of lies and a murderer from the beginning. Those who are actually given power by Satan in this wicked world are far worse off than your typical sinner. Like Judas, of whom Jesus said would have been better off if he had never been born, they have the worst fate of all. Jesus warned in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, quote, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Jesus warned that if someone causes just one of these little ones to stumble or fall, and these satanic rappers have caused millions to fall, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea than what he will actually suffer. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, God's word states for those who are deceiving the masses, quote, the blackest darkness has been reserved forever, end quote. However, truth be told, folks, you don't have to sell your soul to Satan to be lost and under his power and bound for hell. All you have to do is go around living as your own God, reject God's word, and continue to rebel and live a life of sin. God's word warns that there's none righteous, no, not one, and that all have sinned and come short of God's glory, and that the wages of sin is death. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, God's word states that it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. But thankfully, there's really good news. God loves you and gives you a choice to be saved. 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, he that's not with me is against me. Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verse three, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Thankfully, it's not God's will that any of us perish. God's word states in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that God is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. We hope and pray that if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, that you'd have a change of heart and you would turn from the broad road that Jesus said leads to destruction and that you turn to Jesus Christ, who said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father but through me. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and verse 13 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And quote, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God's word states that Jesus tasted death for everyone and that if you look to him and put your trust in him, you will receive the gift of eternal life. Your life is a mere vapor compared to eternity. It's here and then gone. We encourage you right now to hit your knees or just cry out to God from your heart. God have mercy on me, I'm a sinner. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a follower of his right now. God's word reveals that salvation is a free gift. If you turn to Christ and the Bible says you humble yourself, God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud and you embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, you will receive the gift of eternal life. We want to thank you so very much for watching our expose and we hope and pray that the Lord will bless you as you seek his face and read his word. For more eye popping and jaw dropping content, check out more videos on our YouTube page and feel free to subscribe to our channel. You can also check out our Good Fight Radio podcast. Notice that it says boast in the Lord and then it says <laughs> to let that one be what? Joyful. Joyful. Yeah. That's where your joy comes from. As well as my sermons from Blessed Hope Chapel. And he comes back with those when he catches up the believers and he comes with the armies from heaven. It says they comes back with those who are called, who are chosen and who are faithful. We pray that the Lord richly blesses you and causes his face to shine upon you and that you shine with him in his eternal kingdom forever and ever.